What is up guys, Smitty here from Smitty Angling TV and in today's video we are going to be breaking down late summer, early fall during a bass fishing tournament. So stay tuned if you want to check this out. Alright guys, so this is a kind of a new series that I'm starting to do like every tournament. I'm just breaking down after the tournament how it went and what worked for us and how we figured out the pattern so if you like these type of videos please hit the like button to let me know or let me know down in the comments if you enjoy this if you don't you want me to go back to old vlog style day type videos let me know i'll also be able to do that so just let's just see what you guys want more but like i said i'm going to break down this late summer early fall pattern but before i do that i need to give you guys a little bit of background on that specific venue the weather all that stuff so the weather before that day it had a slight breeze mostly blue bluebird skies we had a bit of clouds now and then but nothing too cold and nothing too hot yet we're about 10 days before the start of the fall so that's why i mentioned late summer early fall and now i'm going to break down what our game plan was going into this venue and without any practice so let's go into that okay so like i mentioned we didn't have any practice on the venue prior to the event so me and cj what our game plan was basically is to fish some areas that is going to be influenced by the early fall late summer area so our game plan was to fish really shallow and um, to stick to that because the dam had a bit of flooding in december so the water was still not very clear as it as it usually is and uh, the lake is full of grass a lot of grass a lot of lily pads a lot of vegetation in general so the, t the fish tend to stick to the shallow side a lot more but because it was late summer early fall a lot of the bait fish were quite shallow as well so obviously those bass pushed the bait up even more shallow and that was our game plan yeah fish some points bays um, with a lot of vegetation really really shallow and to be able to do that you needed to have a few different baits on your selection on your on your deck so one of our top players for this event once again was the top water buzz frog you know i'm talking et secret baits frog awesome bait you can get one at Timmel's fishing tackle in nigel if you want to get some but any buzzing frog you can use a horny toad even buzz baits and stuff like that but i would prefer to throw a weedless style uh, frog because of all the weeds and the vegetation was quite thick so just to keep it a little bit more weedless that was a perfect presentation and if you wanted to dissect even more the other big game player that we had on the deck was a punching rig because of the thick vegetation sometimes there's mats and stuff at the top and you want to get through the mats to the fish below and yeah half ounce to a one and a half ounce tungsten rigged up with a bandito bug or a rage bug any style creature bait that's quite weedless on 50 to 60 pound braid on a lack of heavy stock <laughs> a lack of heavy action rod and um, yeah that was the two main players for our event okay so we pulled off at boat number 16 last venue was 33 so we were lucky to pull number 16 and right on the point um, we, probably about the launch about 120 200 meters from the launch we stopped because i got a nice 2.9 kilo fish there in january so i thought let's just go check it out just quickly it had some uh, vegetation there it's quite close to a point with a nice uh, steep deep rock drop off and uh, CJ got the first fish there. We didn't get any kickers, so we didn't spend too much time there. Then we ran straight to uh, quite a shallow area with a lot of vegetation close to some bays and points. And that's where we got our first kick of 1.7 kgs on a topwater frog. We lost some absolute giants, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, when you're fishing topwater, there's always that you always lose fish. So unfortunately, that's part of it. But we managed to get that 1.7 kg we weighed it in first and we managed to secure a nice prize of 500 bucks for weighing in the first fish as part of the bag um sponsored by salt tabs so thanks to them for giving us that prize that was awesome and then yes guys we went back there we just went and dissected even more through more top waters as much as possible we had a few blow ups nothing committing then we went in punching a little bit we got i think cj got one fish like that and then um further on just kept top watering top watering top watering around all the points and other areas that we found that was quite grassy full of vegetation but the secret was guys to not just fish shallow but when you see the grass to go inside and even further to the backs of the backs of the pockets little open grass pockets that was the main secret guys and if you didn't do that you didn't get the blabs because the fish were literally between a feet and two feet to three feet of water so if you weren't able to get that shallow you weren't going to get the top water blow up so that was the main secret and i found this so many times that when you're fishing grass lakes you need to get as shallow as possible when you want to throw that top water uh, those top water lures especially 
in this late summer, early fall pattern because the fish are really shallow. So yes, we managed to get five fish all out of the five. Only one was a decent fish, a proper keeper, about 1.7 kgs, as I mentioned. The rest were really undersized because we really lost a lot of fish and it really costed us. But like I mentioned, that's part of when you're fishing top water. So guys, when you're fishing top water, to keep as much fish on as possible, make sure you have the right equipment. Like I mentioned, 50 to 60 pound braid. Uh, you want to have proper, a proper heavy action rod. Um, so you can yank those fish out of the thick vegetation if you need to. Especially if those fish are way back in there, you have to make long casts to get to them. You need to have a lack of winch on that reel. You need to have a proper, proper reel. And like I mentioned, heavy action rod, thick braid. And then when you get those bites, you need to, you need to pull them. Um, and if you, if you get to that point where you feel that they're just not coming, don't keep pulling because sometimes the fish comes off. And I actually made this mistake during the tournament. And I think that really cost us as well because a lot of those fish, they were just in too thick that I can't yank them out. And then I just kept yanking and those fish came loose. So don't do that. Don't make the same mistake I made. If you hook them and they're not um, busy trying to get out and they're just sitting still in their grass, just leave them. Go in with a trolling motor, get them out with the nick net. I'll, even if you have to yank out all that grass to pick them up, it's fine. Do that rather than just yanking and yanking and they're not really moving and eventually they come off. So yeah, we managed to secure a 10th place. <laughs> And that was our goal once again to the top 10. I think there was about 35 plus boats. I'm not exactly sure. So not too bad. But our overall bag size wasn't what I really wanted. I was more hoping to get towards the 7 to 8, 9 kg range. Because I know that was the potential for rest of winter. Unfortunately, we fell really short with only a 3 kilo bag. Um, so yeah, if we land, managed to land those, uh, those decent fish that we lost, we would have had the goal. But uh, we still managed to get a top 10, so we're still happy with our position. And we still got some points for the next event, which will be held at Arabi. That's going to be an insane event. A lot of rocks, deep drop-offs, trees, and massive, massive bags. I don't know if you guys have watched some of the videos in the past, which I've done at Arabi. But it is an insane venue. I hope you guys have enjoyed this breakdown of rest of winter, late summer, early fall pattern. So what you need to keep in mind, late summer, early fall, the fish start to move into the back of the bays because the bait fish move there as well because they want to stack up for the winter. So uh, they go shallow because there's a lot of uh, filthy, filthy water and stir up in the shallow water. So that's what the bait fish eat. And then obviously the bass follow the bait fish. So as soon as you get into this early fall, start checking out the backs of bays. Also on, on the points and the mouths of those creeks and bays, you can also check that out because they don't obviously just move straight into the back of the bay. They have a transition area. So if you can find those areas in those between the points and the back of the base, you're going to be able to find some mother loads and uh, usually those fish are quite hungry and they just in you know, like a feeding frenzy especially in this early fall pattern so check that out top two lures for this competition top water frog and punching rig also the winning bag was actually caught on spinner bait so a very awesome bait fish imitation also in the back of a bay so just keep that in mind and just confirmation for this early fall late summer pattern but i hope you guys have enjoyed this if you have hit the like button and please recommend some videos you guys want me to make in the future i would love to know what you guys are interested in seeing um, and remember to subscribe and like if you enjoyed it and until next time next time guys enjoy and have a blessed day